Hello everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by me, Jack, VintageElectronicsGeek.com. On today's video we're going to clean up and check out this uh, candle, model number TK-1848 radio. This radio comes from us from uh, about 1968 where it sold for just under $40 at your local Walgreens and other type stores as such. This radio is a, uh, a nice radio. It's very hefty. Probably weighs about the same as a 1956 Buick. So you're not going to be lugging it around for, for too long. problem with this radio and this is what we're going to address your typical dirty scratchy knobs and I will probably need to recap this as well uh, this does offer dial lights and your button lights however when it's engaged the audio gets a little soft. So we'll check that all out. Now I, I've a sneak peek. I have cracked it open uh, and looked on the inside, but that's as far as I've gotten. And with that, I figured I would show you. This is really kind of cool. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. This is a nice blue uh, plexiglass. We've got the original tube cartridge. I've had this radio for quite some time. I've never really sat down and listened to it because of the issue. But what little I have, I can tell you it's very loud and proud. This radio is AM. FM, shortwave, and VHF. The uh, shortwave bands that it covers is 1.6 all the way up to 12 megahertz and your FM covers 108 through 174 so it definitely does cover your aircraft band. It has volume control, tone control, main tuning, your dial light switch. Up top here we have AFC, AM, medium band, shortwave, FM, and VHF police band. Side here we have our earphone and something labeled audio. I'm not sure if that's for a tape jack output or you plug a microphone into it and you sing. We'll have to check that out. Nothing on that side. Back as you saw. Does offer a nice big antenna. My complaint on this antenna though is it's partially ball mounted. And what I mean by partially ball mounted is you pull this up and that's it. You can only move it that much. That's really not a lot of movement uh, for this antenna. Radio does sport a built-in in, uh, shortwave antenna right here and over there is going to be your AM antenna. Okay, have the radio and chassis separated. It uh, was a little little painful. As you can see, the, uh, I forgot to mention the chassis is not plastic. It's that uh, Formica or whatever that kind of wood is wrapped in uh, pleather. Speaker says uh, 8 ohm 1.6 watt. It's a nice big fat speaker there as you can see. I do apologize for my lighting. There we go. And here's a closer look at the chassis boards. You see it's all separated into pieces. I am not too impressed with restringing radios. I'm not going to try to buffalo you and tell you I've done a million and six of them. Because honestly, I've done none of them. And honestly, I don't want to. 
I will if I have to, but I'm not gonna. So with all that said, uh, I'm not sure how excited I'm going to be at removing the dial cord if I have to, to get up underneath here. I may not have to, but I may. I'll look at it and see what needs to happen to remove the, the plate off. And if I could do it successfully so I could access the capacitors that are on the back side of this, I will. And then I'll do a, a complete recap on it. Otherwise, I'm going to do what I can. Now, I'm not sure if the flashlight here. If you look down here, my light's probably way too bright. Let me get another setting on the light. What I'm trying to show you is, uh, there we go, all the dirt that's accumulated in those buttons. I'm going to try to get all that out. I think uh, I'll probably walk this out to the air compressor and blow that out. And then uh, the buttons, uh, I do have access. Uh, I like the flashlight, but I hate all those stupid modes. I know you could hack it, and I just might one day. Anyway, you can see there that kind of switch, and down there at the bottom side, you can access them that way, and I, you probably also be able to access them from the top side. Here's another look down that switch, down that uh, those switches. Move my uh, bench lights in closer, so hopefully you could see it better. Okay, I've got the. Uh, display removed just by uh, removing these four screws. Oops. Try that again without my big hand in the way. You got these four screws right here. And then you bend up these tabs for the uh, lights. And move the lights out of the way and once that happens, oh, you got to move the needle out of the way as well. You have access to the bottom side all without removing that string. So that's pretty good. Now I'll be able to service, replace whatever caps I need in there. Alright, so the next step for me is uh, actually I, I don't think I need to take this out to the uh, air compressor to blow it out. Now that I got this out I could just take a little brush uh, put a paper towel up underneath here and brush all this gunk out and replace the caps. When I'm done with the caps, I'll come in and I'll lubricate all the switches, push buttons, anything that uh, needs lubed, I'll lube it. Well, I don't know what I was thinking on two folds. One, I had my camera angle way too low. Didn't, uh, didn't dawn on me until, well, after I shot the last scene. So I, I adjusted my camera angle. Also, I really should have sat and looked at this board a little bit more. Realistically, there's no capacitors up here. The only capacitors are, are down here. Let me see if I could bump you in a little closer. So you can see the caps all down here, the electrolytics. And that corresponds to an area that with this closed back here I would have had access to the board just the same. Oh well. Now we know how to tear that apart, right? Looking at the rest of this um, to service, this board right here might be a little questionable to tear out, um, but I have two capacitors right here that's uh, 
should be easy accessible with the iron. There's one down here at the bottom, right here. Let's see if I can get the light better. This one right here that I probably can't. And I'm thinking that that might be okay because I'll be able to get the rest of them. This board right here, get you in frame. Uh, this board looks fairly simple to pull out. The um, most of these wires, if not all of them, really have been um, set up where they just unplug. So I take my reference photos as I go, make sure I take plenty of them so I know where everything goes back. And um, I have these, uh, this screw here and then this screw right back here to um, take this board out and that should allow me enough room uh, to pull these three caps out here on the back. I'm not seeing any other caps down here at the bottom, uh, electrolytic caps I'm referring to, whereas the rest of them up on the top should be relatively easy access. Uh, here in the power supply section, I will have to remove the power supply out of here so I can re replace these two big old filter caps. As you can see, should be easy. I think to do that, we're going to have to bump you out so you can see better. I have a screw up here, two screws here, and two screws down here to remove. Then this whole section here will flop out, at which time remove these two, remove these two screws here from the transformer and then I'm, I'm suspecting that whole board will pop out and then I can replace these two caps. This uh, thousand at 10 volt and this one is 470 microfarads at looks like either 10 or 16 volts so should be theoretically easy. The switches cleaned up really nice with just a with a brush. Wiped it all down and so after I finish capping this like I said I'm gonna uh, shoot lubrication from the top as well as the bottom. Make sure I um, get the uh, ball bearings that are down up in here. Get those all lubricated. I'm in the process of reassembling the, the front panel here uh, so I can move on to the rest of the radio. Before I did that, I wanted to show you, hopefully I don't lose them, right up underneath here are these little tiny spacers that I didn't realize they were there until I was wiping down and cleaning up that I noticed that they moved. Well, the recap of this radio is going along just fine. Come across this one capacitor right here that uh, cannot read its value. So I believe it's a 10 microfarad. I'm not sure. It went, uh, went right here, so it'll be easy access if I do need to uh, get back in and readdress that. I just finished recapping the uh, power supply with these two caps here. This one here is a uh, thousand microfarad, and that was reading 900 and something. It, it wasn't too bad. It, it could have lived a little bit longer in there. This one, however, this was a 470, and that was reading uh, around 290 or so. 
So it was just a matter of time before it went. Although I never experienced any um, AC hum or, or anything out of this radio, it's uh, it's a good thing we recapped all this. Now that I got the uh, box here all put back in, um, next thing I'm going to reassemble the radio and then we'll test it out. Oh, incorrect. I got to uh, clean the uh, switches and, and controls and then I'll put it back together and then we'll test it out. Have the radio uh, switches, knobs and all that stuff um, all lubricated. I've powered it on and ran through the bands. Everything is responding like it should. Have that plugged into a uh, bench top external speaker and it really sounds great. Uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, really happy with it. It, it. From what I could tell at this early stage, just whatever antenna is on the radio, whatever nub is for the FM radio, this thing's really sensitive, really good. So the next thing to do is put it in the case and uh, contemplate whether or not I'm going to tune it up. For sure, I'll make sure that all the bands are on frequency. The needle is where it needs to go. And I may, this evening, check it out, see how it responds. Like I said, I may or may not tune it up. We'll see. Well, there it is. All put back together. As you saw me work the volume control there. It is now currently working. Tone control is responding. We're on FM. That light there tells you FM. I've uh, gone through the shortwave band, didn't hear anything there. Looking at the clock on the wall, telling me conditions are not favorable. Not good for DX. And that friend's name, that's another Reddit user. As you can hear, it's doing really good on FM. Let's go over to AM. I haven't tried VHF public band. I probably wouldn't hear much over there anyway. Inside my office, um, it uh, chokes a lot of signal. It does okay on AM, even though it don't sound like it's all that hot. To evacuate earlier this week, return to damaged and destroyed homes. It, it, it really does, um, because it's not good conditions right now for DX. 
Really won't know how good it performs on DX until then. On AM radio, this thing gets some radio stations that my other radio um, has challenges at getting. And my other radio is just a digital radio shack that sits on my workbench. It, it does okay. even a You know, it's a good enough radio to listen to local stuff and a little bit. Opening the second half with the thriller. It's all this out. Little DX in the evening. But I think this one here does. Um, does better. Holds the signal a little bit longer. <laughs> Y con ello, también algo, una nota en cierto. From your friend, Tree. Tree here, just calling to say thanks. de una manera amena, fácil de leer, le entra a esclarecer a echar de Punch that up, but the call signs was KABC. It's either Los Angeles or San Francisco. Citizens, a Nevada child care licensing news. That's the, the translation that they use there of Jesus. Wait. Mike Sugarman. Oil woods kill me. And <laughs> So there you have it, candle, whatever I said it was, TK 1848 or whatever it was. One thing I also did with this radio off camera was um, I aligned the front end, made sure that the dial pointer was where it should be, and did that on all bands. Adjusted the uh, front end the best I could. I'm impressed and, and pleased with the, uh, the radio. Tighten up the handle, anything and everything that needed to be tightened or secured, I, I readdressed that. I cleaned up these buttons while I had them off, cleaned the switch up. Uh, I mean the uh, you know the outer shell got all the dirt and debris off all I got to do now is come back and clean the radio itself up anyway that'll do it for me and this video thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one